Gideon Rose is editor of Foreign Affairs magazine and brings along a tour de force in one of our great fears, which is robots and what they will do to us. The assumption is we need human labor. Is that assumption being tested? Well, this is the great question, right? So if you, in the early 19th century, you might have said automation and technological change is coming and horses are going to be out of business. But over the course of the 19th century, horses actually did really well. There were more horses in the economy at the end of the century than at the beginning. And so you could have said, gee, it's a lump of equine labor fallacy. There'll always be demand for horses. And then in the next half century, horses went the way of horses. And so the question is, will humans whose jobs have actually stayed around, even with previous technology things, will they eventually be facing their horse and buggy moment? Mm -hmm. And in the future, will their jobs go away just like horses' jobs did? That's a really interesting question. Martin Wolf in the, has a great piece in the issue. He isn't worried because he thinks all the technological hoopla now is overdone. I'm not sure. I think the optimists may be right. There are two myths about automation that have consistently been proven wrong. One is that uh, it'll render, render human labor obsolete. The other is that it'll give us lots and lots of leisure time so that we can hang out and watch TV and spend time with our kids. It's the second one uh, that's not happening that is the most concerning. Well, you know, we... We participate in the economy and in life in multiple different roles. Mm -hmm. And in our role as consumers, in our role as purchasers of leisure options, we're going to actually do very well. Things will be cheaper. There'll be more things to do. But in our role as workers, our jobs might be go uh, taken away. And so the question is, will, what, how will we be able to purchase uh, the leisure time and the goods to fill that leisure time with what kind of money? Where are we even getting the, the wherewithal to do that? Because we may not have actually have jobs. It's a really interesting question and the nobody has answers. Your job will be going away. The really interesting question is will new jobs emerge that we don't know about yet to fill that space? And That's what's always happened. One of the arguments that people in favor of automation and in favor of this great new world make is that we'll need people to run the robots. The robots won't be able to run themselves. W will there be enough jobs for those people? Well we don't know. The, essentially you're betting on the come here. It's always been true that there's been new kinds of things developing but the question is Will that happen now, or will digitization, automation, uh, artificial intelligence get to a point where the link between the satisfaction of our needs and the human jobs is going to be broken? I, mean, I, I look at this, and you, you lead with Eric Brynjolfsson and Andrew McAfee, and of course the great work they've done out of MIT. What is their basic theme about this new era, this new, this new moment that we will fall into? Well, that things really are different. We're in a second machine age, is the way they put it, and. Uh, this time around, there may not be the, uh, the standard process in which new kinds of jobs come around because this time around, the machines might actually uh, fundamentally change things. The question, though, is humans have the power to halt that, right? Just like the Greeks have the power to say no to Europe, so humans might have the power to say no to uh, increasing automation. They're not going to go down without a fight. Do we incorrectly focus when we talk about machines on actual physical beings, cars, uh, you know, machines? mechanical dogs I mean what I, I mean the, 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 you know eventually they're gonna come for your job and my job and that's gonna happen not in a machine but on a server absolutely algorithms are just as important as actual robots and it's not necessarily things that look like humans uh, a Roomba isn't the sort of giant Terminator pushing a Dyson it's a, a thing you don't even look like a robot and that's the interesting question there will be when automation and artificial intelligence yeah. and robotics are ubiquitous Will that actually well, fundamentally well, change What's the life? timeline? You edit magazines. I used to write for magazines. When are they coming for our jobs? Well, that's a great question. I think the, one of the things the people in the magazine say this issue is the next 10 years won't look dramatically different, but after that, all bets are off. Do we have to make great strides in artificial intelligence before this is a reality? You know, those strides are actually happening. It's going forward so fast, so quickly, that the only question is how cumulative will it actually be uh, and, well, and will you reach a sort of singularity type? You talk about old TV. Richard Greenfield putting out moments ago at BTIG, Netflix, he ups the price target because linear TV is done. I mean, you talk about technological change, you see that in the media business. Yeah, but this, this is where Martin Wolf's piece is so good because, you know, yeah, driverless cars are really cool. But you know what's even cooler? cars. So the question yeah. is not just are things changing, but are the changes that are occurring now, how do they relate to the changes we used to have? And Wolf, quoting Gordon yeah. and others, says that, you know, the older changes were so much more dramatic that what's I happening agree. now is I piddling. This is the Tyler Cowen thesis exactly. that nothing is so revolutionary as indoor plumbing. 
Exactly. And so the, 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 the skeptics say, you don't even have to worry about all this stuff yeah. because what's really happening well, is a slowdown and stagnation, yeah. not rapid advance. And what's great about that, folks, it's all here in large readable type, I might point out. This is the price of what? Two martinis? I, I don't, for a the, yearly subscription? Are, are you obsessed with the size of type because I, you drink yeah, the martinis before no, you read no, the magazine? No, I'm obsessed with the size of type because when you get to a certain age, that helps. It's a great issue showing both optimists and skeptics. It's on not this. the size of the type, it's what it says.